Welcome to the Peace and Possibilities Podcast. This is Julie Bruns, and you are about to be inspired. I am so excited to share my conversations with amazing people from all walks of life who figured out how to be happy, peaceful, and content doing work they love and making the world a better place so that you can see what's possible for your life. I can't wait to hear what you think. Send me an email and let me know one thing you're taking away from this episode. And never forget, anything really is possible. Hello, everyone. My guest this week is Amanda Parker. And Amanda and I um, don't know each other. We just met today. And I'm excited to talk to her. She is a certified coach. And um, Amanda, I'll let you tell everyone, the audience, what you do. And then we'll jump right into the questions. So tell everyone, what kind of coach are you? Perfect. Uh, So happy to be here. So thanks a lot for inviting me on and letting me spend some time with you and your audience. Um, So I am a certified coach. And I would say the kind of work that I do really, um, it's something I've been doing my whole life, which is really around helping people. Like I'm usually the catalyst that helps people make really big leaps in their life. And I've always tried to make a box on that leadership coach, life coach, but the reality is that people come in when they're, you know, looking for a big change. And I'm usually that last step that helps them jump over the edge there. <laughs> I love that. I love that because we, I know I needed that a couple of years ago, which is right before I wrote my, finished my book and everything. And I, I did this, I did what you're talking about. I'm like, I'm, I'm like 90% there. I just need to get the rest of the way. I knew what I needed. I knew what I was lacking. And I was like, all right, I just like, help me get, get me over the hurdle. And so I hired a coach and had several sessions with him and it was exactly what I needed. I was like, all right, I'm doing it. Like, it's nice too, that you get to have talked to people that are almost there because I think it would be a little, I know I wouldn't be able to do it. Talk to people that are just all over the place or, or they're only 10% of the way. It's too, for me, it's too much of a hurdle, like to talk them into why it would be good and how they can do it and all of that. It just, it would be too hard for me. (laughs) It's luckily um, something I really love. So I, I got into my profession about, five, six years ago. Um, I can tell you more about what yeah, I was doing yeah, before. So that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, tell me um, how you ended up as a certified coach and then tell me, yeah, what you, what you studied in school, what you wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> was it a, it's never, a, it's never a straight road, right? No, absolutely not. Um, so I studied um, at university. I studied Latin American studies and Spanish. <laughs> and then when I left the university, I went to school in New Orleans. So at Tulane, And I left and I had always had in mind that I really wanted to do something with communication. So actually I even went to school thinking I was gonna study communications. I took one class in Latin American studies, fell in love with like culture and history and said, okay, nope, changing course here. Um, When I left the university, I went um, to New York City and as any new grad thought, what the hell am I supposed to do with my degree? And I actually started working in a big advertising agency. So I was working on a number of different um, clients, so mostly in financial services and pharmaceuticals. And after a few years, I kind of, well, kind of, I realized it wasn't the right place for me. Um, So I just didn't feel connected to the work. I was feeling really burnt out and exhausted. And that was only a few years into my career. Mm -hmm. Um, And I started to think for myself then, okay, what is it that I really, really want to do? What do I love more than anything in the world? And for me, that was and still is and always has been animals. So I was like, okay, great. I'm going to work with animals. No idea what that means. Let's see where this path takes me. Mm -hmm. So I started applying to all these different jobs to see what can I do with animals? And I ended up getting um, a volunteer placement with WWF in South America. So I went from New York City, I moved to Paraguay for half a year to work with conservationists. So really protecting the natural habitat. I mean, the big animals there were in my interest, you know, jaguars and giant anteaters Mm -hmm. and all of this. (laughs) And from there, I really just fell in love with the work because there was so much passion and my colleagues were so talented that um, when that volunteer placement was over, I had done a funding proposal for the German Ministry of the Environment. We got the proposal accepted, and then I moved to Berlin to lead the project. 
<laughs> so I jumped around quite a bit, wow. still haven't even reached the leadership side of things. But um, yeah, so so in that space, um, working in conservation, I really loved the work. But once again, I started to hit that point where I was really questioning, is this the right use of my skills? So I was doing a lot of project management and connection and organizing. And I mean, we had a lot of amazing wins in that time. But um, I started to notice some of the challenges that I was facing in my job and that I had seen in previous companies about how the organization was run. Um, and that's where my interest really peaked. So starting to take a deeper look into like the structure and the leadership teams and the way we were doing work. Because as far as I was concerned, I was like the poster child for doing this work. I mean, it was lifelong passion that brought me into the conservation world. And I was so unhappy in the day-to-day -day job. And I never could understand why. You know, I'm like, but I'm doing the thing that yeah. I always wanted to do. <laughs> so what was it? It was really, um, you know, there was this attitude in the organization that we were so lucky to do this work. And I think this happens a lot in the social impact space and in nonprofits. You're so lucky to be doing this work. You would do it for free. Mm -hmm. And that's the attitude. So, and as a young professional building up my career, like this was okay for a few years. I'm like, yes, I'm passionate. I'll do it. And then at some point it was like, well, actually I, I think I also really want a career. <laughs> I want to see myself grow professionally. And I, I saw that limit there. So I mm. saw that every time I tried to move up, I was hitting some kind of wall. I couldn't get beyond what I was already doing. Mm -hmm. So from there, um, I did start working in this organizational development space, which was really amazing just to start getting my feet wet. But I was really hungry for a change and didn't know what it was. So I did what maybe many people have done before me and I did an MBA. <laughs> mm. So I thought, okay, I'm in the nonprofit space. How do I get more credibility or credentials in the private sector? You know, otherwise I was afraid I would leave nonprofit and I wouldn't be able to enter the private business space um, mm. or that I wouldn't be taken seriously. A lot of these things are in my head as well. And a lot of it is street cred. <laughs> mm. So it actually helped. Um, and from there, that's when I really started to recognize, you know what, actually, I really want to take this focus on organizations and leadership. Like, I think that there's something wrong with how leadership is done in organizations. Mm -hmm. Like, the cultures do not fit what humans enjoy doing and mm -hmm. how they want to live and enjoy their work and their lives. And that became really my full time focus, just 100% on like, in the beginning, I was always saying it was about humanizing the workplace. Um, but for me now, it's really around making organizations, making leaders heart-centered. Like, how are you bringing your heart, your whole self into what you're doing? That's awesome. I love that it's like, it went all, usually everyone I talk to, it never is a straight line in your career path. But I love that you really were like animals, MBA, organization development, you know, like, <laughs> I'll go back to school, um, I, I, you know, just going, traveling all over the world. It's like, it's just fascinating. It's just, it's so, um, it's important because if that, that's when you just have to keep turning around and figuring out, like you, you made, you went over here, you're like, I love that, but it, it's not quite right. Well, what is it? All right, I'll try the NBA though. NBA, that hurt you. I'm going to do it. And then yeah. what you get there and then you discover a little bit more about yourself and what you want to do and the work you want to do. And little by little, it's never like you, I, I think it would become almost kind of sad if you just decided what you wanted to do and then that was it. And then you're 22 or 25 and then, all right, 25 years later, I'll just keep doing this. It would, I think it would be kind of sad if you, if you figured yeah. it out quickly, right? Because then the rest of your life is just, you're never discovering new things about you and the way the world yeah. works and, and, and helping improve things and stuff too. So um, that's, a, that, that's pretty cool. So you are, um, so you, you, so along the way, obviously you're like, okay, I love animals. I'm going to do this work. And you, you were loving it. And then you're like, right, I'm going to get my MBA. Or I'm going to help, help organizations little by little. Were you, were you happy and peaceful along the way? Or were you like really stressed out about it? Cause you couldn't figure it out. Were you figuring out how to stay in that good headspace while you were navigating all that? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like, this honestly is the lifelong journey. <laughs> Anyone who says they figured it all out, 
you know, um, maybe yeah. for a time, maybe yeah. for a time we find that, that moment of rest and relief that, oh, wow, okay, I found my place. But the reality is, and this is also my personality, and actually, I see it more and more reflected in the people that I work with, because it's always a mirror, like it's mm-hmm. just showing back, here's what you're working on. Mm-hmm. I can be very restless. So when I achieve something, I always have the next ideas are already brewing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There's always another idea on the horizon. And I think through each stage of the journey, I'm, this is something I'm actually really working on because, you know, the MBA wasn't quite right for me. There was, it it wasn't where I felt really at ease or comfortable. It was a great learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. And for some of my colleagues, it was amazing. Like they really loved it. But for me, it was like a means of getting to that next place. And the same thing happened in my job in conservation. You know, I stayed in that way too long. (laughs) Like I should have left years before I did, but I didn't know where to go. And I think that's really common because as humans, we're just afraid of change. We are afraid of what we don't know. And you know, a lot of it has to do with how did you grow up? Who are your role models? Who are the mentors or friends or people in your life that show you what's possible? Mm -hmm. So I think at every stage of my own development, new doors opened up, new things became possible. I became aware of that I could do X, Y, Z, whatever that was that I might have never even considered before. So actually earlier this year, I was I, I started this actually a few years ago, but I um, completed my training as a Reiki master. Mm-hmm. Before 2018, I didn't even know what Reiki was. I had no idea. So I think that's really beautiful when you keep your eyes open to just what's different or a new possibility or just stay curious. Things just come into your awareness. And when it kind of lights you up and you're like, ooh, what is that? That's the thing really to put your energy and attention on. And I, I think that. most of us, I know for myself, have often worked towards this like idea of success. Like what, oh, I'm supposed to do this and then this and then this, move my way up in the world in a certain way, but actually that doesn't fit me at all. So I think as we get older, as you do more deep inner work, you start to realize, oh, what is it that I actually want to be doing? (laughs) So this has been my journey, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I love your comment about like, keep your eyes open and be aware because um, I was just talking to a friend a couple of days ago. Well, like last week, and we were talking about um, this cool new technique. It's it's tapping. I've been doing it for several, like almost a year now, whatever, but she had heard of it. But you know, like when you hear, you have a conversation with one person, you're at work and then your friend and then your sibling or whatever, and all this and, and random people, you know, at getting mm. coffee or whatever, and then you keep hearing the same thing. She had said five or six people had been mentioning this to her. It's like, okay, <laughs> it's time. It's time to look into it. It's not an accident. None of all of these people you just mentioned aren't related in any way. Mm. You keep getting the message because you're supposed to be aware of it and you're supposed to look into it and see if it's the right thing. And it might not be the right thing, but it's, it's going to guide you at least one way to get to meet someone else. that's going to help you do something else. You know, it's like, it might not be that perfect thing, but it's like that, that, that idea is going to introduce you to another concept, concept that you need, or that's going to help you or whatever it is. I just, I just think we're not taught that at a young age, we're just heads down, especially in our country, heads down, go to school, do the work, do well on tests, whatever, get good grades. And then, and then open your eyes and figure out what you want to do with, with your life. And it's like, no, if you start looking at all this earlier, you can be there sooner and you can figure it out you know, sooner, you just have more clarity. So I think that's such a, such a good, a good way of looking at it. Keep your eyes open, be aware. You never know. You never know. All right. So what, so um, as you, so now obviously you're, you're doing all this great work coaching and and you love it. And um, it brought you to where you are now. Are you, um, now that you are here and doing all this cool stuff, are you, um, is there, is, looking back now, you're like, I wish I would have, or is it one thing we already talked about what you learned earlier, what you wish you would have learned earlier, like, to not be afraid to, to leave that position earlier, to not stay too long. Like, you know, when it's too long to get out sooner, like what's one of the big things that you like looking back say, Oh, this, I wish I would have known that just a little bit earlier. I think um, the thing that comes up more and more for me is really around trusting that inner voice, like trusting my intuition. It has been there all along. If I look back at every moment in time where I, made the leap to go to Paraguay or to go to Germany. I had never been to these countries before when I said yes. And 
the reality is that it was just so clear. It was so clear. There was no way to say no to that opportunity. And that, even though it was hard, I mean, the transition moving to a new country, different language, it is difficult. But even still, it was so easy. So people look at me and they're like, wow, you lived in that place. That's crazy. And it's like, well, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> like, I heard the voice. I knew it. It was just, and this has come up so often for me too, because I've often had moments in my life where I, I feel really anxious or I feel overwhelmed or I don't know what to do. And I've learned that is my intuition as well. The moments that I'm feeling super anxious about a decision or something I'm about to do, if I just listen to, wait a second, I feel really uncomfortable here, what's happening? That's all the information I need. So in that moment, if I just say, you know what, this isn't the right time, or this isn't the right thing to take forward, then all of a sudden, the anxiety disappears. And I say, oh, wow, okay, that's a really good mechanism for listening. But I didn't, I didn't learn this until recently, you know, I didn't understand this until very recently. I think I totally agree with you. We, 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 especially women, I think we have, a, I know lots of men that have this good intuition too, but women, especially like, and we're just taught to like push it down or, you know, like, Oh, that's, you know, you're just a little uncomfortable, like just suck it up or be nice or be polite. It's like, no, it doesn't feel right. Don't speak up, whatever it is. We're just, we're just not as comfortable doing it. And we're not taught back in the day to do it. So I love that it's getting easier for us to, to see women and, 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 and appreciate the intuition. But I was talking to, um, a younger, you know, 20 year old, um, recently. And I was like, you know what, ask, ask yourself what you really, like, you already know probably what you're really excited about. You already know probably what is, it doesn't feel right. So just stop asking everyone else and ask yourself because you already know it's, it's good to get confirmation from other people. It's good to hear their insights and wisdom and all of that, but you, you already know. And why, why second guess it? Don't second guess it. Learn, figure it out now that it's trying to teach you something, like you said. And usually, when you don't second guess it and you make the decision, and the clarity comes, you're right. The anxiety falls away. The confusion falls away. It's like it's not confusing. You're just afraid to take the step or make the decision. But once you do, it goes away. And if it's the wrong decision, you can make another one. It's not the end of the world. It's not. It's not life or death. Just. But you probably already know, and you could save yourself so much time instead of asking ten or twenty people. It's such a good point you make too. Like when you start looking outside yourself for the answers, I've done this so many times. I'm like, oh, I need an expert. I need a mentor. I need a whoever to okay. teach me all of this. The minute I start going down that path and going too far, it's when I realize, okay, I'm not listening to myself at all here. Hit pause, what's actually going on inside. It's such brilliant advice you're passing on. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, and we're not taught to, I think, I know I grew up in a, in a time or, you know, in a family too. It was just like, you were just, you, you work hard and you just like, you, you do what you need to do, get by, whatever, but you're not actually like reflecting and thinking and all these things. And when people think that it's just like, you're, you're not being, you're just doing. And when you're not being and being in, which is being insightful and reflecting and just um, listening to the inner voice, you, you can't figure out what's happening. You're just like heads down or whatever. And then you, you, you ignore the signs or the, intuition of the voices because you're just like well I'm busy I can't really think about any of that instead of just pausing and saying no I'm going to think about it for a minute and here's what I know um um it's just I'm glad we're talking and having more of these conversations now especially like since COVID I think like it's just been one of those really great things that's come about with it giving everyone more time so like well how do you want to spend the rest of your life or career or whatever like you were saying like, what do I really want to be doing with all of my time when I'm working because it's an important question it doesn't get asked enough it's just like right you go to school or whatever, and you open up your own business, you start a job, and then you just you just work, and then you have your, your life. And it's like, it's not that simple. And it's not it doesn't help you to get where you really want to be if you just look at it, like from one angle or one perspective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, what what's um, let's see, see. So when you talk to people in your business about, you know, like, trying to figure out like, I want to have a great job or what's or um, how do I figure out, I love what you do, or I kind of want to do something similar, or I want to figure out, like you did, exactly what you want to be doing. What's the advice you give them in your in your business or even personal life? Like, what do you say to them when they're searching for a meaningful career, or they're not happy with what they're doing? Like, what's, besides the inner voice stuff, or maybe that is your advice, what's the... What <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always a piece of it. I think um, the, the biggest part of the work I do is really helping people understand what it is they really love to do. and 
from that place, you know, maybe it's not that, oh, I love playing with my cat. I'm going to be a cat whisperer. I don't know. <laughs> There's many different ways that can look, but what is it that you love about this particular activity that you're doing? You know, um, I had one client I was working with and she was brilliant in her job. She was working in a uh, business development at a design agency she was so good at what she was doing. She came in, oh, I don't really need to change anything. Everything's sort of fine, but maybe in the future. And after a few months of working together, she really wanted to be a writer. And it mm -hmm. came to the surface in bits and pieces. And it was like, actually, my whole life, I always wanted to write, but I never thought I'd be good enough. So I didn't pursue it. And through that work, it was, it's not that you have to then quit your job and become a writer and that's all you do forever. I mean, if you have the courage and the financial means, fantastic, try it out, but really just, okay, then how can you start to incorporate pieces of that, which you love into your life more and more? And I think there's a lot of different ways to be fulfilled and we all have different values. So for some people, financial stability might be the highest value they have then you keep the job that's helping you pay the bills and find ways to find creative fulfillment or whatever else that is in your life. Um, so definitely for me, that's probably long advice because that's literally takes months to figure out, but it's really understanding what drives you, what lights you up, and then having a better understanding of those values, those deeper values you have so that you can live in alignment with them. And that can look so many different ways. There is no formula. There's no yeah, I, one right way. You're right. I, I love that concept because what we're taught to, you know, like, what do you love? What do you, you know, what are you good at? What do you, what do you, you know, that one of the, I remember that one of these things, things when I was just discovering all this on my journey early on was like, you know, what could you do for hours and time flies by and what would you do for free? All that other stuff. But like you said, what do you value? Cause your life could be, it could be all different kinds of things, but if you, you value security, and safety and whatever and then you're just gonna and then you said you, your job is good could be great but like what else can you do to do other make other parts of your life great you have to keep that job for your safety and stability or whatever security because you do not want to compromise that that's okay that's different you know it's different for everyone but know what that is get to know yourself and you go back to like trusting yourself and reflecting and then once you know what it is you're like okay i'm willing to do this instead like i i had my own business for a couple of years and i realized I, I love doing this, what I'm doing. And I love writing. I really love writing. I didn't know. I, I didn't know I was going to love writing until I wrote my book and I didn't discover that until I was doing all this. So it was, it was a great two year, two years. But one of the biggest things I discovered was I don't want to be that person that's selling themselves all the time and be in business development and looking for the next client. And that just, I can't, I mean, I could do it. Was I good at it? No. Could I, could I make it work if I had to, you know, there's a gun to my head. Of course I could, but I'm like, I don't, I don't drive in that way. I want to do the work. I want to just do the work. I don't want to go find the work. I don't just do the work. Um, and, and maybe if I had done, I, I find the work I could do less of it because I'm out there getting bigger clients or whatever. But to me, that wasn't the important part. It was like, I want the major part of my day to be actually doing the work. I discovered that during this process and I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to just do that. Then I'm just going to do the work and it's a, a way better fit for me. And I never would have found that out had I not take the risk and I would have been wondering or whatever. And I think in the back of my head, I was always like, I don't, I don't need to be an entrepreneur. I don't, it's not my drive. It's not what has never been an ambition of mine, but I thought I needed to do it to get these other things done. It's like, no, I, I didn't really have to do that. So you just never know what you're going to discover when you take the leap and risk. And I think also just recognizing that it, will look different than you expect. So when we hold on to those expectations of what our life should look like or will be like, you know, it's never going to be exactly like that. As long as you know, you know, I have an idea, I want to create something big or be, be open-minded to X, Y, Z, then you let the energy flow and see what comes and who comes into your life. And as you said earlier with you know, this person, five people in a row recommended mm -hmm. <laughs> the tapping to you, then you're actually open to hear that message. And it comes in from so many different places. And if you're just head down and focused on this one thing, you're, you're totally missing the opportunity to see what else might come in that really lights you up and looks totally different than you could have ever imagined. Yeah. You have to be open to it. It's good advice. Okay, final question for you. So what's what's one new thing or insight or 
feeling you're taking away from our conversations today after we've talked? I think it's so helpful. Well, first of all, to speak with someone who has um, that like-mindedness about this openness and possibilities. I mean, we're here on peace and possibilities, right, of course. Right. So <laughs> it's not that surprising, but right. um, really for me also speaking this out loud reinforces just how much of my journey felt like an accident at the time, but in reality was just opening new doors to become who I am still becoming. (laughs) So really getting to see that from that open perspective. Oh, I love that. I just got the chills. Um, What felt like an accident wasn't really, because people will say like, oh, I I didn't, you know, like I just happened to come here. I got lucky or it's like, no, I don't believe in accidents. And my good friend of mine, we, we also say we don't believe in coincidences because you, you weren't supposed to, you, you got there late, you weren't supposed to get there in time for whatever reason, there was a car accident you missed or whatever. Like we don't, we don't believe in them because we think everything happens for a reason. I know it's a very s- simplified way of thinking about it, but yeah. um, you're not, there aren't accidents. Yeah, you know? Things happen to you because they're supposed to happen the way they happen. And um, that's another thing I wish I had learned way, way, way earlier. Um, instead of trying to like, oh, I'll just control this and I'll just do this over here. And why didn't this work out for me? It's like, I've opened up big time in the last couple of years to that too. I don't know if that's been a big lesson for you, but i um, not having to like, all right, my flight's not, my flight got canceled. I'm not supposed to go there. I'm just not supposed to go there. I, obviously, you know, something, if I was supposed to go there, that wouldn't have happened. Something else is supposed to happen. I don't know what it is, but I'm not just, I'm just not going to be so stressed about it anymore. So it's a better way to live. It's more, well, it's healthier too, right? <laughs> it is. And yeah. honestly, I still fight this, but more and more I'm getting there like okay hold on where's the resistance let it go <laughs> yeah because you can't there's so much you can't control and it, it fighting it just makes it harder and makes you more stressed and makes you less healthy and it's not worth it and, and it wastes time so so uh, so how so are you doing Reiki healing like what how can people get in touch with you and, and what kind of if they want to work with you what, what what can you help them with and how can they do that So I'm super excited because I'm launching a mastermind on November 1st. It's called T7M and I'm bringing together all of these different modalities. So it's really helping people to figure out what it is, those, those points of what they want to create in their life, or maybe they're not sure they know that they're really on this precipice and don't know how to reach that and bringing them together with a community of other incredible change makers and creators and leaders Um, And I'm bringing in all these different learnings and modalities. So the energy healing, the coaching, um, and letting people learn from each other and also have that safe space to grow together. So the the best thing I can say, the thing that my heart is totally in at the moment is T7M. Um, And there is a website for that. So it's purposefulmastermind.com. And if you want to learn more about coaching, you can also check out amandaparker.co. And we'll have a chat. Awesome. Thanks, Amanda. It's been a really fun conversation and good luck with your new program. It sounds really cool. And I love that you're integrating all these different aspects of it instead of just coaching. Not not that just coaching isn't important, but all of it's all of it's important. Um, and it helps it helps to expedite the process of you know figuring out your life and stuff. So that's good. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much for having me yeah, on. I really enjoyed you. speaking with you. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you loved this episode. Don't forget to like us, subscribe, review, and share it. I hope you were truly inspired. And for a little more inspiration, don't forget to pick up my book, Peace, Possibilities, and Perspective, Eight Secrets to Serenity and Satisfaction, in your life and career. I can't wait to get you love in your life.